Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Sonali, and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys all of my Canon equipment. I always get so many questions about what camera I use for taking my Instagrams and doing my videography, so I'm going to be sharing with you my Canon equipment. Now, sometimes I do use Sony, um, and the reason why I'm doing this video is actually because I'm going to fully switch to Sony. So I actually just got a new camera that I'm filming on right now, and I feel like the quality is just a hundred times better on the Sony. But Canon is awesome for pictures and video too. Um, I just love the mirrorless on the Sony because it's so lightweight, and especially when you're using a gimbal, you know, it's harder to carry such a big DSLR like the Canon, so that is pretty much why I switched. But Canon cameras are amazing too. Um, they do hold a very special place in my heart because it was my first ever real camera. Let's stop rambling and get into these lenses because I know y'all want to know what I use to take my Instagrams. So the first lens I have here is the Sigma 30mm f1.4. So you will notice all of my lenses are under a 2.8 aperture and this means that pretty much all my lenses will have that bokeh kind of blurry background look. As some of you may know, this lens was the YouTuber lens. Like this was what you needed to have if you wanted some bomb blurry, like twinkly lights in the background of your YouTube videos and makeup tutorials. This was that lens. So I got it and I'm not really sure how much it was at the time I bought it, but according to Amazon today, it cost $376. So this is the cheapest lens that I have in my whole collection. Um, and it is Sigma, it's not a Canon, but it performs really well. I never had any issues with it. Um, so basically I use this lens for my makeup tutorials back in the day and just every YouTube video that I ever made back in the day. Um, this is a fixed lens, which means you cannot zoom. This lens is really great for portraits too um, because it gives you that nice bokeh kind of blurry background. I definitely could have gotten rid of this a long time ago since building up my collection because this is definitely the least used lens in my collection but something in my heart just wanted to keep it because it was like my first YouTube lens so that's why it's here with me today but I definitely will be selling this soon just because I'm not going to be filming on a Canon camera anymore. I highly recommend this to anyone who wants to start a YouTube channel and doesn't have the money to buy prime lenses and lenses over a thousand dollars because trust me we all start somewhere and I definitely invested in my collection, so not all of these lenses will be super affordable. So this one will definitely be your go-to and most affordable lens. So the second lens I ever bought was the 24 to 70 millimeter f 2.8. And unfortunately, I don't have that lens to show you guys, but I will insert a picture on the screen right here. Um, I actually just sold it yesterday, and that is why I'm filming this video today because I totally forgot to film this even before I started selling all these lenses. This lens is a zoom lens, so it's not fixed. This lens right now, according to Amazon, it costs $1,599. So it is definitely pricier than my first lens, and you'll notice that this lens has actually a red line around it, and that means it's just a fancier lens. I'm not really sure because I'm not a super professional photographer. I mean, I love to take photos and I do it sometimes for gigs, but I don't really know all the specs on it, but I do know that it performs way better. So you'll see sometimes Canon does have cheaper options of the lenses, but the red line lenses are the better option and more pricey. So I'm not really sure what provoked me to buy this lens, but I've been watching a lot of Canon lens videos and a lot of people say this is in their top five lenses and I honestly agree with that. It's a really great beginner lens. When I first started taking graduation pictures, I actually used this lens. It was great because you had the wide angle option and then you can zoom it in and when you zoom it in, the background actually gets a little bit more blurry. I also like to use this lens for my makeup videos because you could zoom in really easily on your eye if you're doing eye makeup or anything you wanted to get a really close-up shot of. You didn't have to change lenses, you could just zoom right in. I also really like to travel with this lens because you can get those wide-angle shots, like I said, and you can zoom in to signs or sweet treats or anything like that. This lens could also be really great for food photography too. Going back to the aperture, I do love my blurry background, but 
when it does come to even portraits or food photography, you do need to see like all of the food and all of the face. So sometimes when you have a really low aperture, like 1.2, it does tend to blur out like the shoulders if the face is like out a little bit more, if that makes sense. Especially for food photography, it depends on like what vibe you're going for. If you want a blurry background, then obviously go for the lower aperture, but most likely you'd want to see the food. So 2.8 is great for um, getting everything in focus. So the next lens is the 16 to 35 millimeter f 2.8. So the price of this lens, according to Amazon, is $1,899. So again, this is a zoom lens. If they have two numbers, like the 16 to 35, it's a zoom lens, and you'll always know that. Um, if it's the just 30 millimeter, then it's a fixed lens, so you can't zoom. This lens is a 2.8, so it doesn't really have the blurry background, um, but if you zoom in all the way to the 35, you can kind of get a little bit of the blurred background. So this lens right here is the widest angle lens I have out of my whole collection. So I actually bought this lens when Susie Shattuck and Teza's pictures were going viral. I'll put some on the screen right now. But as you can see, they're just super wide angle. You can see their whole outfit. You can see the whole background behind them and it's not super blurry. So that is what inspired me to pick up this lens. When I picked up this lens, it was also at the time that the professional photos on Instagram weren't actually doing as well because I think they were just too good, if that makes sense. So I wanted to try this wide angle lens out and I actually had so much fun. This made me feel the most creative, um, not professional, but the most creative because I would take it out with my friends and we would do like really fun photo shoots with it and you could pose really cool and just, I don't know, this lens just makes any picture look super freaking cool. So I guess this lens is the most expensive out of my collection. I honestly don't really know why and I want to know why because I feel like the other lenses would be more expensive, but I don't know, maybe it's just really popular right now and they increase the price, I'm not really sure. But I really like this lens and it's really popular to vlog with now. I hear of so many vloggers using this lens on their Canon mirrorless cameras because now it's super trendy to like zoom in and zoom out really fast to get that dramatic shot or just like tell a funny story while zooming in and zooming out. I personally don't know how people vlog with this because the lens itself is really heavy and even though they are probably shooting on a mirrorless Canon camera, it's probably lighter than a DSLR, but it's still probably gonna be really heavy, so I don't know how they do that, but kudos to them. So the next lens that I have, and probably my most used lens, is the 50 millimeter F1.2. The price of this lens right now, according to Amazon, is $1,299. I absolutely adore this lens. This is the exact lens I use when I'm doing grad photos. It really gives the most buttery bokeh background. And honestly, this is so worth my money. I personally think that this lens helped me to book more grad photo gigs because when you're getting your grad photos done, you want them to look really professional with that blurred out background. So if you're using a lens with the 2.8 aperture, it doesn't look like you got your pictures taken and like paid for, which like if you're gonna pay for it, I feel like you would want it to look more professional. This lens is also really great for fashion photography and street photography. I remember years ago when I was looking what lens to buy next, I saw this lens being used by street photographers during New York Fashion Week and it really just gave the most beautiful blurred out background while also getting the whole outfit in focus. Um, so I was obsessed with it way back then, but I knew it wasn't in my budget until I started to really get a lot of photo gigs to be able to pay this off. But it's definitely worth your investment, especially if you are doing photography. Now for videography, I feel like this wasn't always the best for me because I've always been filming in really small spaces, coming out of college, living in a sorority dorm. You know, I don't really have that much space to back the camera up because this is a really close up lens. So it would literally only get my face and my shoulders. 
and not all the decorations like you see right now. Also with this lens for video, it might be a little bit harder to see everything in focus, especially if your face is like all the way out here and your shoulders are all the way back here. This could be a little bit blurred out just because it's not in the same focus line. So just keep that in mind, um, but you can always turn down the aperture, but why not use it to its fullest abilities? So the final lens I have for y'all is the Canon 24mm f1.4. According to Amazon, right now this runs for $1,549. Funny story about this lens is that I literally bought this lens last month. I actually really wanted to get the Canon 6D Mark II as my camera upgrade, but this weird thing happened with the shipping. The box never came to my house. It was a month later and it never came. I contacted USPS and I finally contacted eBay and they gave me a full refund. I thought this was God telling me that I needed to buy the Sony a7 III um, and so I did. I honestly knew that the Sony a7 III was the clear winner between the two because I feel like a lot of people are between those two cameras, but I didn't want to get rid of all these Canon lenses, especially because I just bought this lens. Um, and I feel like my collection was just too big to switch all over to Sony, but I guess fate told me otherwise. So I am going to be switching fully to Sony lenses and everything. So I am going to be selling all my Canon lenses. Um, but this lens is a really great wide angle lens with that shallow depth of field. So you do get the blurred background while also getting the wide picture that is really trendy right now. I have not gotten to personally use this on my own Instagram, on my own photos, but I did get to use it on one grad session and I really loved it because it just felt a little bit more personal because I was closer to the subject and it was blurred in the background as well. Um, I actually got this lens because a photographer I follow on Instagram named Kiana Govind, she uses the Sigma 35 lens, I think, and she actually uses Nikon, I'm pretty sure. Um, but her photos just look so nice when they're wide angled and the blurry background, it just looks amazing. So I did want to get a wide angle with the blurry background. I also told myself that I would start filming my videos with this since it does have that wide angle view. It will show all the decorations behind me. And I feel like that's kind of trendy on YouTube now to have like those wide angle lenses. So that is my Canon lens collection and I wanted to share a really big secret with you guys that you must know watching this video. I did not pay full price for any of these lenses. I bought them all on eBay or a marketplace of some sort and got them way, way cheaper. So although I do think it is very important to invest in your lenses, I also feel like it's it's not dumb to buy them full price. but you could be saving so much money and getting the same quality lens. Plus, if you buy on eBay, there's something called Square Trade, which is a warranty that you can buy on top of it, which isn't always super expensive. It might be like 30 to like $90. So if you are worried about it being damaged or getting damaged, you could totally buy that on top of the already discounted lens. Another piece of advice I wanna share with y'all is that it is very important to invest in your business, invest in your collection, and invest in yourself. If you are trying to do this professionally and make money off of photography sessions or videography sessions, then definitely start saving a portion of your money to get a better lens. And I know that there are some of the cheaper options for the lenses, like I know Canon has a 50 millimeter 1.4, I think, that is way cheaper, probably half the price, but I mean, this one is a red line and although I don't know exactly what that means, I know it's way better. And especially if you want to make this a profession, definitely go for the better quality lens and the better quality glass. So y'all are probably wondering, okay, what lens do I need to purchase first? And honestly, this all depends on what you're gonna be photographing. So if you're gonna do engagement shoots or grad photos, I would go with the 50 millimeter 1.2. If you were gonna do fashion shots and you really like the wide angle look, I would go with the 24 millimeter. Some people really need the ability to zoom, so I would go with the 24 to 70. 
But again, it really just depends on what you're willing to spend and what your work is. Again, I'm not a professional, although I do photo sessions and I know a good bit about Canon, but if there's anything I got wrong in this video, please don't leave a comment. I'm sorry, just I apologize now in advance. <laughs> One last thing I forgot to share with y'all is that I did shoot on a Canon 70D. I really liked this camera at the time because it did have the flip out screen, touch screen, everything I wanted and more. But if I was gonna go back and buy another camera today, in the Canon family, I would definitely go for the 6D Mark II or even just the 80D. Um, but once you start going higher, like the Mark IV and the Mark V or something like that, they don't have the flip out screen, which is so stupid and makes me so angry that not all cameras have the flip out screen because hello, vlogging is a thing now. So if you are just starting out in photography or just buying a camera for Instagram or just as a hobby, I do suggest getting a Canon because it doesn't take that much time to learn a Canon camera. So that is it of this video. I hope it helped y'all out. If you guys are in the market for a new lens, let me know what's on your list for your next purchase because I'm really interested to see what y'all are gonna buy next. Also, if you guys have any other questions, please, 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 instead of commenting on this video, DM me on my Instagram because trust me, I'll reply way faster. Um, and feel free to go through my Instagram and DM me a photo and ask what lens it was taken on. Because for me, if I see a photo and I really like the vibe, like I'd wanna know exactly what lens that photo was taken with. But a little disclaimer is that I do have the Sony A5100. So some of my photos on my Instagram are taken with that camera, but still feel free to DM me if you want help and I will definitely help you guys out. So I will see y'all in my next video. Gonna kiss these lenses goodbye. Um, I'm probably going to sell these lenses. So if you guys see a lens in this video that y'all want, um, DM me on Instagram. I'm not sure if it's gonna be sold already. So if you guys are interested, I will be selling these lenses for a way cheaper price than they are on Amazon. But I will see y'all in my next video. Bye.